Um, Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Mwangi Kiyunjuri and his Treasury counterpart Henry Rotich today gave conflicting reports on the amount of sugar that was imported after the government gave a tax waiver to importers last year. The two cabinet secretaries failed to answer key queries satisfactorily and were asked to appear before the MPs at a later date to respond to lingering queries. The duo were grilled as MPs claimed that a company implicated in cocaine trafficking was allowed to import sugar. Stephen Latour reports. As the joint sitting of the National Assembly's Agriculture and Trade sought to unravel the sugar puzzle today, many questions remained unanswered. The lawmakers questioning agriculture CS Mwangi Kionjuri who appeared to lay blame on a gazette notice by Treasury that gave way for the importation of surplus sugar. Are you confirming to this committee that you advised Treasury to open this window for any person to import. And secondly, is that the tradition? In one month, CS Rotich did two notices of Gazette notice in regards to sugar. Was the CS confused? What was the problem or what was the urgency? When this Gazette notice was issued out, we expected that it's only the registered importers that will be able to uh, enjoy the window. Little did we know that there are other prayers that will came in. How do you begin arrest, uh, charging other Kenyans when the highest level of government sat to approve these things that opened a floodgate which was not able to be controlled and everybody brought in sugar? Kunjuri told the committee that the Gazette notice did not specify the amount of sugar importers were to bring into the country. What even shocked the committee was that only 71 traders had been cleared to bring in sugar, but over 100 importers took advantage. Or were you also, as AFA, issuing licenses to anybody to import? We had admitted that there would be a shortage of, a, of a, about 700,000 700, metric tons. That was what was envisaged. We have only 12 millers who are licensed. Here you have 190-something people who brought in sugar. Can you certain us of, of the hygiene of those people? They could have even put some sugar with metals and everything and landed in the country. Why can't you just answer this committee and say exactly what happened? Because, I mean, honestly, if you tell CAPS to go and verify what is being imported, what document did the Ministry of Agriculture give to CAPS to verify what is coming into the country? When Treasury CS Henry Rotich appeared before the MPs hours later, the session was even more heated as MPs demanded to know why the CS failed to comply with a parliamentary report that banned over 100 companies. The lawmakers claiming that one company, ED and F Man Commodities Limited, was implicated in smuggling cocaine and later allowed to import sugar. Can you tell us the last one you destroyed, around seven containers, belonged to who? And why did you destroy that consignment? Um, I don't know. I don't know the owner. You, you, you may need. Uh, do we need to? Owner for history. He does not. He does not act trade in sugar. He, do, he trade in cocaine. Yeah. So if if the man of an history, we could be actually having cocaine in this country in the name of sugar. During the probe, it emerged that only one company, Kibos Sugar Refinery Limited, has been licensed by the Sugar Directorate to manufacture refined and industrial sugar. Yet several others were involved in that business. As the cabinet secretaries failed to answer all the questions satisfactorily, the MPs asked them to appear before them at a later date with a comprehensive information. The sugar probe continues tomorrow with directors of companies implicated in the ongoing fight against contraband sugar also expected to face the joint committee of the National Assembly that now has only 10 days before presenting its report before the National Assembly.